السلام عليكم ورحمة الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار My dear little children I welcome you back to our Ramadan school series for this year Today is the night of the 4th of Ramadan and it's 1442 years after the Hijrah of the Prophet ﷺ, which coincides with April 16, 2021. Alhamdulillah, we have finished three days of fasting and we are entering into the fourth day. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us and all the Muslims the ability to fast and not to break the fasting of Ramadan without a valid excuse. This is something very important and we have spoken about all that in our previous classes. Today we are going to talk about the things which is okay for us to do while we are fasting. So the things that we are going to discuss today, all of this inshallah is allowed for you to do or perform while you are fasting and it will not break your fast and it will not diminish, diminish the rewards of your fasting. Why are we talking about this? Because there is some confusion about these matters. A lot of people, they say, if you do this, it will break your fast. If you do that, it will break your fast. Sometimes, uh, when we are little, I heard there were used, people used to tell us, if you scream, if you fight, your fasting will break. For example, uh, sometimes, you know, our friends used to say that if you collect spit in your mouth, a lot of spit and then swallow it, it will break your fast. And a lot of these things sometimes causes confusion. And sometimes, uh, you know, children are paranoid. We are, we are worrying, did I break my fast, did I not break my fast? So the golden rule is, the golden rule of fasting is, just memorize this. Nothing breaks your fast. No action breaks your fast except if something is mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah. I.e. Allah said if you do this it will break your fast. If you do that it will break your fast. Or the Prophet said if you do this it will break your fast. Or if you do that it will break your fast. Other than those specific instruction, if somebody comes and tells you if you brush your teeth it will break your fast. If you use toothpaste it will break your fast. If you do this it will break your fast. If you take shower and some of the water goes through your nose or your mouth and you swallow it it will break your fast. All of this not correct as we will see inshallah today so these things if it happens and we have to do it while we are fasting alhamdulillah our fasting is valid for example sometimes when we are fasting we have to receive injection shots and sometimes maybe some kind of iv fluid or nowadays a lot of children especially those who are in maybe high school after a certain age they are allowing them to take the covid shot you know the virus shot all of these shots and injections and uh, uh, you know IV fluids, everything is allowed while a person is fasting. Why? Because these shots are not eating or drinking. This is going through our skin and it does not break our fast. It does not break our fast. Uh, however, if you took your COVID shot and if you are feeling sick and you have to take some kind of medication, now you have a valid reason to break your fast. It's not because you took the shot, it's because you're feeling sick. So keep that in mind. Also, some people sometimes have problem in their gum. So they have to chew something. So there are some kind of gums which are there that don't have any flavor. I'm not talking about the chewing gums which we chew and has flavors and tastes and all that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the gums which has no flavor, no taste. Those kind of gums, if somebody has to chew it because they have problem with their teeth or some kind of jaw problem and this and that, this is absolutely fine provided you don't swallow it okay now if by accident you swallow the gum of course accidental things doesn't break your fast so this is but don't get it wrong you cannot of course chew the traditional gums that is found you know with all sorts of flavors and this and that bubble gums and all these things not allowed we are only talking about a specific type of gums which has no flavor no taste tasting food without swallowing it so let's say your mom is cooking and she wants you to taste the food. Taste not by eating, 
just by your tongue is it enough salt is it enough sugar is it enough bitter is it enough whatever uh, in that scenario yes you can taste as much as you want with your tongue and then you spit out if there is any residue of food or something you spit it out in case something does go through your throat it doesn't break your fast it does not because these are all accidental and always remember when you have something in the mouth there is there is the possibility of some residue to go through your throat nobody can escape it that does not break the fast uh, using perfume and also burning bakhur. Bakhur, we talk about some kind, some, some kind of incense, like this kind of incense. There's some, some woody incense. If you burn it, you know, it will create a smoke. So some people, they think if they inhale the smoke and they have those particles of, you know, whatever, ashes and things, if it goes through their nose and through their throat, it breaks the fast. Does it break the fast? No, it doesn't break the fast. So burning bakhur, smelling bakhur, you know, as I have seen the Arabs doing that, and many Muslims they do that alhamdulillah this will not inshallah uh, in any way shape or fra for, uh, form break your fast also using something in the eye like you know uh, some people they use some kind of mashkara some men they use what is called known as the kuhul these things when we put in the eye sometimes the residue can go through our throat okay if it does there is no problem so these ca are used can be used rubbing oil in the body or in the head Okay, why I'm saying this? Because some people, they think if we use the oil, rub, and the skin will absorb the oil. So this absorbing, which means what something is going inside our body. So they have this general rule. If anything goes inside our body, it will break our fast. This rule has no foundation in that sense. Okay, so using oils or rubbing oils and this and that, these are absolutely fine. They don't break fast because rubbing oil and the oil is being absorbed through the skin it does not it is not eating and drinking only thing that breaks our fast is eating and drinking why because allah said so in the quran okay all sorts of inhalers some children they have asthma and they have to use some kind of inhaler that inhaler could have some vapor that inhaler could have some powder whatever it is it will not break your fast usually that stays in the you know goes for the uh, what do you call it for the uh, lungs okay for the lungs disease to you know relieve the stress and so on and so forth this will not inshallah break the fast using miswak miswak is the you know the wooden stick that we use to clean our mouth as the sunnah of the prophet this is called miswak or even brushing the teeth with a brush traditional brush that we use with toothpaste absolutely allowed some people they say if you use toothpaste it has taste okay and they say it's forbidden no it's not forbidden and they also say if you use toothpaste a residue might go through your throat which is true it can but doesn't break the fast we spit everything out and there is some kind of thing that will go through our throat that's absolutely normal not a problem uh, so using toothpaste mouthwash and any sorts of oral hygiene the things that we use for oral hygiene for cleaning our mouth to smell good all of these are fine as long as of course we don't intentionally swallow it right and we spit things out very important but if don't pa don't panic if something just goes through your mouth and you feel the taste is going through your throat don't panic this does not break the fast some children they have to use eardrop eye drop nose drop for allergies for whatever does this break the fast it doesn't break the fast usually the nose drop eye drop and ear drop they stay in the area for for treatment of this purpose okay so it, if you, even if you feel some taste go through the throat it doesn't break your fast okay it does not break your fast inshallah swallowing a big amount of spit as i mentioned to you about my childhood stories uh, yes does it break the fast of course not Swallow is part of your mouth. Uh, sorry, uh, spit is part of our mouth. Okay, and and you know swallowing that in no way, shape, or form. In the time of the Prophet Sallallahu didn't they have spit? They had spit. The Sahaba did they come and ask the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Prophet of Allah, if he have spit, what do we do with the spit? He never asked these questions. Why? Because this was understood that spit or sp swallowing the spit should not break the fast, because it is part of our system. Otherwise, constantly we have to spit out things and our mouth will become 
dry and maybe will die because of that so this is not correct uh, no types of vomiting so some people they have this idea that if I vomit I'll break my fast no types of vomiting so there is two type of vomiting one vomit is like involuntary you're feeling sick and you throw up and some kind of volunt vomiting is like induced vomiting like some people they gag intentionally to throw up none of these of course we should not do that intentional vomiting i'm not sure maybe there is a reason for them to gag and throw up something that they're feeling comfortable that it will come out it will be good or i'm not sure medically how you know correct this is but my, our point over here is to what whatever kind of vomiting it is it does not break the fast even if this vomit a part of this vomit maybe by accidentally can go back to our tummy none of this will break the fast however there is a distinction we have to make as for the intentional vomiting although the fasting does not break but there is an atonement atonement means a person has to fast an extra day for that day. why because allah decided it why is if his, if his fasting is valid why does he have to do an extra day doesn't it mean that his fasting broke the answer is no it does not mean that his fasting broke it is an atonement a penalty allah decides whenever he wants to impose a penalty for whatever reason he decided this and we have authentic hadith from the prophet sallam, and we go by that inshallah uh, rinsing mouth taking shower some people they're afraid to rinse mouth when they are fasting because they are afraid you know why because they're afraid that a portion of this water might go through the throat and some people they say oh when i rinse my mouth i feel coldness through my throat of course you will feel that you can never get rid of every single drop atom of water from your mouth this is not possible in the time of the prophet they used to make wudu including the prophet while he was fasting this is normal and they never used to panic because of it. the only thing the prophet recommended while we are fasting is not to overdo the inhaling the water through the nose you just gently put some water in the nose and blow it up don't uh, inhale the water too much and if it is inhaled too much and some of the water does go inside does it break the fast no it does not but since the prophet recommended us not to do that we do not do it but if it accidentally we do it and some of the water did get inside there's nothing you can do these are all accidental things they do not break the fast uh, similarly swimming or submerging yourself in the water when somebody does that a portion of this water will go through the ear maybe nose maybe whatever mouth maybe and accidentally it could be small or big amount of water could be swallowed. That's why some people they say, just to be on safe side, don't swim. Don't submerge yourself in the water. Okay, that could be what you, if you want to feel, if you don't want to do it, that's fine. But we cannot say it is haram. We cannot say if somebody does swimming during the day time of Ramadan, it's going to break his fast. We cannot say that. Okay, okay. So, so we tell them, be cautious, be careful okay uh, uh, don't do something intentionally but accidental things if it happens there's no problem if water enters our mouth, mouth during the wudu we have discussed it it does not break the fast of course it does not break the fast uh, also maybe a person in a, in the in the state of fasting they have to give blood or they have to receive blood giving blood or receiving blood do they break fast no, they don't break the fast. None of them will break the fast. Inshallah. Ta Same thing, there is a topic about cupping. Cupping is a you know, type of a treatment that the Prophet used to do uh, by, uh, you know, by uh, uh, extracting a certain amount of blood from a certain part of the body. Of course, they are done you know, professionally by the people who are called the hajjam. In Arabic, it's called hijama. Or in, in English, it's called cupping. Okay? This cupping, whether you are doing the cupping yourself, to some uh, whether you're doing the cupping to somebody or somebody is doing cupping to you none of this inshallah will break the fast neither by giving or receiving the blood and these are basically the usually the question and the concern comes from the 
children or even sometimes of course from the adults so we should have clear understanding about it and we should not be paranoid remember the golden rule nothing breaks the fast unless we have a clear statement in the quran or a clear statement from the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam a lot of people they bring their own color in it and they say just for the safe side just for the sake side do not do this don't do. and then it becomes difficult for people we do not want to do that we want to teach the people what is in the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu what is allowed and what is not allowed and that is sufficient inshallah for us to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by fasting so that we can attain taqwa i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the correct faith and the correct amount of ihtisab so that we can fast the month of ramadan with iman and ihtisab so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all of our sins subhanaka allahumma wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh